in Matthew chapter 28, uh, 20, where he says, I'll be with you till the end of the earth. For our life is true and God is faithful to all of his promises. I just want to take a portion from the Bible, Psalm 114. The psalmist is recounting God's response to a nation who is now in the captive, how God saved his people. So here you look at God is giving a promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. After a few years, Abraham really doubted. Genesis chapter 15, where God is reminded Abraham, I am faithful to do that what I promised to you. In, in Hebrews chapter 6, we read there, there was no one above God. God, that's what God saw by himself that I will fulfill what I promised to you. Years passed by when Isaac, he faced some challenges. He was going through some difficulties where again God coming there and reminding Isaac the promise what he made with Abraham. A few years later, Isaac's son Jacob running away from his brother and he was a person hopeless, aimlessly running where God appeared to him and said, the promise that I made to your forefather, I'm able to fulfill that. In Genesis chapter 50, we see how Joseph now reminding his siblings about the promise which God has made to Abraham. 400 years later, God, through his mighty power, he delivered his people from the land of Egypt. When we look into our own life, what happened in the Old Testament, what we just read, is just a shadow of what we are experiencing today. We were in bondages, we were in the darkness. But because he has promised us, God has sent his son, Jesus he died on the cross. Through his death, now we have delivered from that bondage of sin. And today we are in the light. This is the promise of God. Now here in Psalms 114, you will see here, it's a matter of when and then. 400 years, they were in darkness. But when they came out, verse 2, it says, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel's dominion. It's not that Judah has earned it. Judah became God's sanctuary. You and me. But why? Because he has chosen you and me, the place where he is going to dwell. Sanctuary, what does it mean? It's a holy place where we will give worship to God. And dominion, which means he reigns so that they may honor God they may worship God. For Israel, it's a journey, the absence of his presence to the very obvious presence of God. The same for us, the journey that is from the darkness now to the marvelous light. He has given us that assurance that he is with us. It's also possible that, that I have a name, I've got an identity as a Christian, as a believer. By default, his presence is there. The journey can be successful only when we carry his presence. For Samuel, chapter 4, Israelites went out to fight against Philistines. Verse 5 onwards when you read, they decided we will bring the ark of God and bring it in our camp so that we will get the victory. The next day the Philistines went and attacked Israelites. What happened? Earlier it was 4,000. Now it is 30,000 people died. And also what happened? They have taken the ark, ark of God. Let me tell you, the ark was there but God's presence was not there. The example that I have given from 1 Samuel we should not take very lightly his presence. Now verse 3 onwards we see how God's presence demonstrated through his mighty power. The sea looked and fled. Moses and the whole Israel, they stood before the Red Sea. In uh, chapter 14, verse 23 onwards, and verse 24, in the night, God just looked through the cloud. He didn't utter a word, he just looked through the cloud, the entire enemy drawn in that water. It is the presence of God. Or Pharaoh didn't know that. Someone is dwelling among them, and his presence is enough. Second, Jordan turned back. From this incident 40 years later, about to enter the promised land. You read in Joshua chapter 3, God told Joshua to prepare the people. And you read in Joshua chapter 3, all the priests, they were standing on the water, Jordan, they were holding the ark of God, Jordan parted. Jordan turned back, people entered the promised land. Other part, Samus is saying, was for the mountain started or its leap like a ram in Exodus chapter 19. When his presence came down to the mountain, what happened? The mountain started shivering. To the mighty creations, he's asking a question. 
why it's happened to you all the creation they will have to obey the creator psalms 148 god has not changed in the from the old testament to the new testament he is the same god we should prepare this vessel we should prepare this body to carry his presence every day in psalm 114 verse 7 the psalmist is calling tremble earth at the presence of the lord at the presence of god of jacob now this is a calling for all of us all the nation now come and tremble before him because was he is the same god who delivered his people from the land of egypt finally was eight the psalmist is saying who turned the rock into a pool the hard rock into a spring of water the god who performed a miracle there in that desert for his people through his mighty power when god performed through moses or joshua all this work god only used some people very what you call probably not even up to the mark but god used them as a vessel to show forth his presence to the people around do not allow the enemy to bring that discouragement in your life you need to always understand this promise what he has given that he is with us when you are carrying his presence to a place where all things are very much like against you but if his presence is there it's not you but the one who is the creator of everything he is going to show his power come out from your discouragement believe that he is there and he is there to show forth his power through our life we should seek for his presence like david he cried to god god i seek for one thing that i want to dwell in your house i just want to see your presence 